morning. Good morning, Sudi. How are you, sir? I'm good, thank you. How are you? It's fall, you know, like, oh, I need a candle. Somebody give me a candle for Christmas. <laughs> you know, good. I was thinking, oh, to remove the smell from my house, you know, I'm, I think I have to candle, right? Uh -huh. So somebody give me a candle for uh, Christmas. Yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> Very exciting. Hello, Lily. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thank you. New hairstyle. Yeah, yeah I cut my hair. It looks good. And uh, people say I look so much younger. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Mm. That's why I stay bald. I know. You <laughs> want to look like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so uh, very important, Pastor. So, uh, uh, do when is the last viewing for the last viewing for your mother-in-law? Today at two to two thirty. Oh, so you should go. I mean, I, I, I think I want to go if if it's okay, if it's not too much problem. No, you can go. Yeah, they're doing the viewing today at two to two thirty. I'm not going. Oh, why? Oh, I never do bins. I'm doing the whole funeral. You're doing the whole funeral. So yeah. he's there all the time already. Yeah. He's there. I what? I don't get it. <laughs> you are there in spirit. Well, no, I'm going to do the whole funeral service tomorrow. Oh! The, the I funeral's see. tomorrow. Oh, okay. And... I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna be it. I'll be doing it anyway, so it's no point. Oh, okay. And then honestly, I don't. I I I just don't do viewings unless the family asked me to. I didn't do my mother's viewing. I didn't do my grandmother's viewing. Yeah, because you are there to. You are there to be the service, right? To do yeah. the service, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, so this is separate. The viewing is the viewing. The service is the service. Correct. Oh, okay. Some people have the same. Right. Well, the viewing is where they're going to have the open casket. Yeah. yeah. Everybody can come and say their buys and uh -huh. things like that. Mm -hmm. That's only going to be for 30 minutes. And then the funeral is tomorrow. That's going to be at the graveside. So it's not going to be at the chapel. So it's going to be relatively quick. Oh. Anytime I do a graveside, um, Burial is very, it's about 15 minutes. If mm -hmm. we go longer, then it's the longest I did was probably about 30 minutes. That was only because they had other stuff in it, but mm -hmm. relatively quick and pretty, pretty small uh, family. So, is it, uh, is it going to be in the Orange County? Yes. Yeah. Irvine. Irvine yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So, probably you want to text me the address, the funeral home. Yeah, I'll get it from the wife and, and send it to you. Yeah, okay. okay. I can do that for you. And we appreciate it. That would be awesome. <laughs> well, it's a, I never met her. <laughs> uh, but I seen her from the Facebook. In spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a blessing. Mm -hmm. That would be super, super cool. Thank you for that. You're welcome, Pastor. Yes. We should, we should do that. And Lily will go there in spirit. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you yeah. for the invite. <laughs> okay, yeah. Pastor. Um, yes. One thing very, uh, very quick is that uh, this week I think um, um, it's very good. Uh, I connect. I connected with the widow. You know the client that passed away. I told you. Yeah. 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 Uh, I connected with the widow because she. So she she experienced uh, different things after the husband passed away. Mm -hmm. It's like it's a, a awakening for her. Right. So uh, then we start to share about things, you know, um, because I told you right that um, uh, at the final viewing, I told the husband to go to the light, and then because of the husband passed away so quick, instantly it was a shock to the family. Mm -hmm. So a good thing was that 
uh, at the burial site, um, the aunt was possessed with his soul. So he speak, right? He spoke mm -hmm. and then uh, he give uh, everybody, I mean, sort of like giving uh, his final wish for the family, you mm -hmm. know? So then after that, um, after that, she, she said that um, she went through a process. She went through a process. The long story short is that uh, she started to have intuition. She didn't know. She mm -hmm. didn't know that she had intuition. Mm -hmm. And she, she said she will not, she will stop asking God why this happened, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, then, of course, I give her some uh, uh, motivations, uh, direct her, you know, uh, direct her. And she said, yeah, she feel that uh, uh, she will have, uh, she feel that she, she feel that uh, she has to help people mm, yes. okay? uh, mm -hmm. because uh, she shares some of the story not many that, uh, that she she will meet women that has never find a true love not like her you know she she has a happy happy marriage you know the husband love her very much you know and respected her so much you know so um, and she and 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 she always asked the husband that uh, give me dreams mm. so one of the dream the dream that she got was okay she was sitting at the dining table okay they were just talking you know and the husband always smile at her you know that kind of, you know like he he usually is he uh he usually is uh when she's with when he's with her so she was smiling talking and then uh, she was asking me, hey, how are you feeling? You know, then he said, good, you know, I'm well. And he disappeared. Mm -hmm. He disappeared. And then somebody appeared. Mm -hmm. Dark, tall, dark, uh, dark head. Mm -hmm. And then, so she asked, who are you? Mm -hmm. Where are you from? Then he's... Uh, he just smiled, and that smile was a mean smile. <laughs> mean smile. <laughs> she said it was a mean smile. Mm -hmm. So I said, "Oh, okay." Uh, then she talked to you know people in the church. You know, mm -hmm. said, "Oh, you have to pray for him for nine days, you know, so that he will go to the light." <laughs> oh, we don't need to do none of that. <laughs> and then, and then, uh. I said, okay. Uh, so she did that. She did that. You know, then since then she has, uh, she has no dreams of him yet. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Uh, but she, she said that um, she always want to talk to him, you know. Mm -hmm. so, you know, suddenly she has no companion. She can still talk to him. He's still there. Yeah, yeah. But he, she said, no companion. I mean, now she's alone with the kid only. You know, usually, she, you know. Well, she's still mourning. Yeah, she's mourning. Yeah, let her, let her mourn and let her retune herself for the absence of that person. It's an adjustment. Mm, yeah. So she has to go through the process of adjusting mm -hmm. from that energy that presence, the husband no longer being there mm -hmm. in the physical. But she's very intuitive, mm -hmm. or she's an empath. She picks up energies. She's a, yeah. very, she's a very good channel. Yes. And because she's a very good channel, she can channel him and speak to him anytime if she feels lonely. Mm. And he will, if she just calms her breathing, calms her mind, she will hear. Just like she saw the dark figure who gave her the mean smile. She's just learning energies, that's all. Mm -hmm. It's just energy. See, but the good thing is she was not afraid of the dark energy. It's just energy. She can say, go away, energy. It's just letting you know that it's there. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm.
but she has power over over all of it. She, she has to know she's in charge. Mm-hmm. She's the boss. And when she is ready for companionship, not out of loneliness, then she will be ready because she will be 100% whole. In other words, she won't be lonely for a companion because she will have herself and she will be content with that. Once she's content with being alone with herself and creating alone by herself and being independent by herself, now she can create the husband to come in and add to her because she would be ready then. If she gets into it now, she will only make herself more miserable because it's not him. Mm. He's filling in the blank of loneliness. And when you get into loneliness, you lead into depression. You lead into all the other negative emotions. So tell her to mourn. And it's okay, but when we say mourn, we really mean, yay, good God, he had crossed over, yes, good. His mission is complete. My mother-in-law's mission is complete, good. Job well done. So we celebrate, it's a celebration of life, not death, because there's no such thing as death because it's only what? Eternity. Eternal. Mm -hmm. Buddha said eternal. Christ said eternal. Allah Mm -hmm. said eternal. Jehovah said eternal. All the gods said eternal. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand, spirit is what? Energy. Energy cannot die. It can only be what? Trans. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you would not call leaving your bedroom to go into the bathroom death. It's just merely a transition from one state or run room to another room. Mm. In the Holy Bible, they say to be absent from the body is to be present with God. And that is true. That is really the process. Instantly. Instantly, you're shifted back into consciousness with that what you would call God, spirit, source. Does that make sense? Mm. So when I don't view death differently than people, I understand that her mission was complete and it was her time and it's okay. Mm-hmm. So we rejoice about the energy and the life that she had because he was probably very compassionate, very loving, very forgiving. We could go down the list So he lived a good full life and he made her life happy. He added on to her. So when he transferred that energy, he's in a good place. Remember I used to say, or I still say, you can transfer ignorance from depth into spirit. Mm -hmm. Just like you can transfer that thoughts and those feelings and those emotions. Mm -hmm. But we do not want that, right? We don't want to transfer ignorance. Correct. <laughs> we want to transfer so, consciousness. Correct. So we teach you don't die in time because if you die in time, you die in karma, which means you'll come back. If you die in consciousness, which is what we're always talking about, the mind, the mind, the consciousness, which is your spirit, if you die in your spirit, per se, or the resurrection, as the Christian would have it, then you finish the dharma cycle. Now you graduated. Kind of like in this life, every trouble you pass or graduate, you go through a nif- different level of trouble. Mm-hmm. The old trouble is not as any trouble anymore because it's easy now. You don't even experience that trouble anymore. Mm-hmm. Because one, you recognize it when it begins to happen and you begin to shift it before it takes hold and becomes a problem per se. Mm-hmm. So new problems and new experiences. So when we transfer from what you would consider from life to death, it's just a transfer of energy, of consciousness. That makes sense? So hopefully that'll help when you explain that to her. She probably won't get it. She'll probably say, Melissa, you're crazy. Who told you this madness? (laughs) Just say my pastor. 
that's what surprised me. I'm, I'm just thinking to myself because I was explaining to her about the contract, about, and she also told me about eternal life. So she mm. understand that. So yeah. she was telling me that, like you said, she was impact mm -hmm. because uh, she can she can receive other people's emotion. Yes, gotcha. Very, she's very, very powerful. I sense it on, on you. Just from the contact you have with her, she's very powerful. She's, yeah. not, she's been doing it way before he, been way for years, for years, for years when she was a little girl. Yeah. She's been doing that. She just suppressed it mm -hmm. and didn't tell anyone because she didn't want to be the oddball or the weirdo, mm -hmm. you know, or the strange one. So she kept it to herself and she managed it where, where now he's gone, she's free to let that loose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was thinking, oh, is that my student or what? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You are ascended master. We don't say it to pump your head up or, or build your ego. It's really one of, of humility and one of love and wisdom and compassion. So when we call you God, we are really saying love. God is what? Love. God is light. So if God is love and God is light and you're created in the image and the likeness of our God, then you are light and you are love. So now you become the light of the world because of the love that you present to the world, your servitude, your forgivingness, your compassion, your neutrality, your non-judgment. People feel those things, so now she's attracted because guess what? Like-minded thinks alike. So if she's an empath, then you have to be an empath. <laughs> because guess what? We're all empaths. We just do it in our own way. And then we put labels on it on what we call it. Some people call it empath. Christianity might call it discernment or revelation. Some might people say channeling. Some others say a gut intuition. There are several names for it mediumship or medium it's the same thing mm. you're still tapping into vibration and frequency that's all it is mm. if you remove all the labels it's just frequency and vibration mm. so creation is out of sound color mm -hmm. and frequency mm -hmm. that is creation mm -hmm. make sense Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So you have a great student. Train her well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, after New Year. After yeah. New Year, we're going to meet up and uh, we're going to do a lot of stuff because um, they are one of, they are, this family is one of my best clients because they listen. Mm -hmm. And also the husband, um, prepare the family, protect the family. Mm -hmm. So right now, he's dead. Uh, they will be receiving a lot of uh, life insurance money, mm -hmm. which uh, I help them to purchase. Mm -hmm. So now, yeah, so now she, she doesn't know how to manage her money, you know? Mm -hmm. So she will be sitting down to talk, but at the same time, we will be talking about spirituality. Good. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's a great, that's a great lesson because you learn quickly as a master, you also become the student. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. Very quickly, you become the student. Each time I teach you all, I am student. Because you bring me experiences and I have to go to wisdom to try to get an answer or say, I don't know. <laughs> and it's okay to say, I don't know. <laughs> don't have to know everything. Mm -hmm. Only a fool knows everything. <laughs> I feel that her impact, her impact is similar to mine because mm -hmm. she attracts so much of the, of the pain of other people. Yes. She attracts uh, a lot of, uh, you know the suffering. She will be watching the and uh, her her desire to help those people, but that's she right. just doesn't know how. So that's where you get to teach her. So the yeah. first thing, first thing you teach her, thirty days of unconditional love. 
<laughs> right, off, right off the bat, I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. Quickest way to teach people is let them identify one because they don't know what love is. So if you say God is love and they don't know what love is, then how do you expect them to know what God is? Mm -hmm. If you don't know what God and love and they're the one, God and light are the one, all these four things are one. We're saying the same thing. Does that make sense? So once you teach her love, now she understands God. Wow, I am God. Where is God? God is within me. In order to access God, I have to go within me to manifest everything I want to bring it out. It's like when our hair grows, it grows from the what? Outside or inside out. Kind of like birds of a feather, they grow from the what? Inside out. Mm. Your desires and your manifestation, call it your consciousness, your kingdom, manifest from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Well, her companion is going to come from within. Her house, within. Her finances, within. Her love, within. Everything, within. Mm. Oh, if you teach her love, then she would know, wow, this is what love looks like. This is what love feels like. This is what love acts like. Because now, when she sees those who are suffering, she can send them love without taking on the suffering. Ah. Hmm. You can't help anybody if you're suffering with them. Yes. You always hear me say, I cannot get sicker to make people what? Healthier. Oh, yeah. I can't get poorer to make them what? Richer. Mm -hmm. Can't do it. Cannot do the work for them. But I can send them the love and show them what the love looks like, feels like, and what it acts like. And that's the biggest part is love is an action. Why? Because it, you feel it. You act upon it. You have compassion, peace, forgiveness, neutrality. All those things are love. All those things are aspects of love. You might not call it love, but if you are serving someone out of compassion, it's still a form of love. You don't want the person to die. <laughs> you don't want them to be in worse shape than they are. You want them to be in better shape. That's a form of love. That's a form of compassion. And then you want peace with the people you come around with because who wants to argue all the time with people who are unreasonable? Love attracts other like-minded people who want peace. Now we can have a peaceful conversation. Now we can have a peaceful time. Now we can have a peaceful experience. That's love. Love is under peace. There's no anger. There's no anxiety. There's no jealousy. There's no envy. There's no strife. There's no your fault, my your fault, not my fault. <laughs> You did it all. It's all on you. None of that. Mm -hmm. Love acts only because of compassion, forgiveness, wisdom. Because love is wisdom. They are not separate. They are one and the same. So when you say loving wisdom, they are one and the same. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. yes. so, yeah. 30 days, unconditional love. <laughs> Simple lesson, which means you have to do it also because you got to keep track of, hey, we're going to start on this date and then keep track for 30 days. Hey, how's it going? Is it okay? Because we have to build each other up. It's kind of like a marathon race where if I'm running the sprint and I have the baton, now I get to a point where I have to pass the baton to Lily. She takes off running. Mm -hmm. Then she passes on to Sudi. He takes off running, passes on to Melissa. Melissa passes on to Anton, and so forth and so on. See how it works? Mm -hmm. So, in essence, that's still the web of relationship that you're building, which is good, holy, and beautiful. So when you teach her the unconditional love, now she'll be more fine-tuned to her gifts and her abilities because she's already there. So you got an easy student. All my students, except for you guys, have been very difficult. <laughs> oh. Very rebellious. And then they wonder why it doesn't work. And I said, well, this, this is not a catch. This is not for everybody. 
-hmm. And I don't over push it on everybody. What works for me is not going to work for the next person. But what I do know is one thing I do know, love, love never fails. So if I preach only love and preach only forgiveness and only peace and only compassion and neutrality and no judgment, how can we fail? How can we ever fail? And then I'm not putting a name on a building saying, oh, come and worship this religion or you have to follow this type of doctrine. Follow God. God is love. Now let's identify what love is. Now let that be the spirituality of your religion. Well, love now becomes the religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> yeah. That's why uh, this uh, this uh, this week the ho my horoscope really sent it to me and said love is free. So they say. <laughs> then complication come into play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, the complications are payments are extracted, expectation, demands, and sacrifices wow. get made. Okay, and then ties bind. Faith seem to choke as they inter intertwine. Mm -hmm. Perhaps these complexi uh, complexities exist to point what is and is not love. This this sentence I don't understand. Okay, perhaps these complexities uh, complexities exist to point what is and is not love. Yeah, the complexity, the complexity. The yeah. Complexity. You say now now how can you tell? Love is free. Okay, love is free. Yeah, but it comes with all these com uh, complexities. Correct. So then you know how? How we can balance it? Easy, because you know how to identify it. Don't get rid of all the words. Remember, satisfied, not satisfied? Mm -hmm. That's love. Who doesn't love to be satisfied? Okay, if love is free, it shouldn't have all this, right? What I give you is love, right? It does. You know how many people would charge you thousands of dollars to, to teach what I teach you for free? Mm -hmm. They will charge you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars for this because it's freely given. So when you understand every time that you get blessed with whatever you pray for, that is love being manifested from God. You are in perfect alignment with God. God is love. So your prayer was in love and you got your response, good or bad. God does not judge. He does not see the good or the bad. It's the possibility and the mission. You would call it your positive or your negative. Your light or your dark. You call it the divine dichotomy. You need one to experience the other. You need somebody to push you in the back per se. In our case, drop kick you in the back. So it's always this constant dance that you're always doing. Always. So when they say love is free, think about it like this. Do you charge Stanley to love him? <laughs> Pastor, don't laugh. I told my kids they owe me a million up front. I did too. I got my money back. <laughs> yeah. I said, when you get rich, the first million is mine. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. But think about it. You love unconditionally regardless of the mistakes they make. Mm -hmm. That's why it's free. Because do you know why? You didn't judge it. You might have been disappointed. Absolutely. That's in the human. But you didn't, you didn't condemn you didn't go overboard and say, oh, you know what? Now, because of that, you're out of the family. Now we're going to get you out of the will. Because people go to that extreme based on things that they dislike because of what the child did or didn't do based on their rules or culture or whatever. So they go marry someone they didn't like. Oh, now we don't like that person, so we cut you out of the will. Mm -hmm. Now you're not part of the family. We're not going to talk to you. Now they put up a judgment. Mm -hmm. Is that uh what? Yes. 
sometimes uh, for for a culture like Chinese, if you don't obey your parents, sometimes you get disowned. Yeah. Can they really dis? Really, let's think about this. Can they really disown you? No. Your blood. At the end of the day, you were born to them, so it's their belief that I'm going to put up a wall not to talk to you to prove a point that I can no longer control you. Oh. At the end of the day, it's about control. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, true. It really is. It's control. I want you to do what I say, and then I'll be happy because now I can go tell all my friends to have a social status to make myself feel good. Mm -hmm. So now my kids have to go to a certain school. They have to get a certain job. They have to be in a certain position. They have to make a certain income. They have to live in a certain area, a certain home. They have to have X amount of kids. All these things based on what? Culture. Mm. Doesn't serve anything because you have more friction and tension and judgment because the kids are saying, I want to live my life. Now we disown you because you didn't do what we say. <laughs> yeah. That's really what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's not taking responsibility and that's not teaching love. That's only teaching judgment and that only, think about what the child does. Now you disown me, so now I'm cut off. So what is my real feeling toward you now? Mm. What did you just teach me now? You didn't teach me love. You didn't teach me compassion. You definitely didn't teach me forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So what did you teach me? Mm. Anger, fear, bitterness, hate, mm -hmm. dislike, all those things. Matter of fact, here's the big one. Revenge. Mm -hmm. Big time. Everybody wants to get somebody back. I'm going to prove a point to show you wrong. I'm going to get even. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but one of another thing is that sometimes the parents themselves are like, they're hypocrite because they, when they were young, they were rebellious too. Yeah. And, now, and yet now they want to control their kids. You know, they should actually look at themselves how I was. Yes. Oh, they forgot. Yeah. <laughs> they forgot all that because now they become self-righteous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. I, I've been through it. So you listen to me because I've been through it. You don't need to go through it. Trust me. I got it figured out for you. Yeah. Live this life this way and your life will be perfect. Trust me. I did it. <laughs> I did all the work for you. I just birthed, I just, I just birthed you out. <laughs> They want little tiny robots mm -hmm. and not realize they were the biggest hypocrites, biggest rebellious yeah. people. Then they'll tell you, no, no, no. I would listen to my parents. But then when the mommy and daddy are not there, they go and sneak and do their, their thing. <laughs> hoping not to get caught. And then uh, ask mommy, daddy, how many spankings did you get? <gasps> <laughs> yeah. Different conversation now. Papa, sir. Um, uh, it is true that as parents we should guide our kids Correct. because the kids will not know any better watch this you told, you told your kids at a very young age you started to teach them about fire didn't you yeah, yeah. Hot, Stanley don't touch the hot, don't touch the stove Stanley don't put your hand in the fire 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 did Stanley go put his hand in the fire <laughs> Yes, he did. Fire. Yeah. <laughs> he learned what fire was because even though you said the word fire a thousand times and had the voice, don't touch that fire in your angry voice, mother voice, stern mother voice. <laughs> and then you turn your back and what do you do? <laughs> I, think, I think the kids are like the universe. They don't know the word don't. Free spirit. Yeah. You can't control something that's free. So now it's separation because the parents want to control something that's free. Watch this. Children walk before they can talk. That means if a parent is not attentive to their children, they can easily walk into the street and get hit mm -hmm. without talking. Mm -hmm. This child decides, 
because I can walk, I'm free to walk and there's no boundaries. And I happen to see them go in and out of this thing called a door. I don't know this thing called a door. I just see them going in and out of it. So I'm going to go out of it too, because there's some things out there that I hear, mm -hmm. smell, see, and want to experience mm -hmm. outside this boring house. Yes. And walk away. And then unfortunately some fall in swimming pools and drown. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's still a free will spirit. Mm -hmm. You can't control the free spirit. Mm -hmm. Stanley, don't touch the fire. Now if you say, Stanley, what's fire? When was the first time you got burned? He'll tell you. He remember when he got burned. <laughs> and he'll tell you, my mother told me, don't touch this. <laughs> now I know fire equals pain. <laughs> Fire equals respected. <laughs> now I know what fire is. Sandy, don't touch fire. Okay, mom. <laughs> Far from it. Didn't like that experience. <laughs> so you learn quickly. Just like with anything, until you experience it, you don't know what that word is. Mm -hmm. Just like love, I can say love all day long, but until it's until it's shown to you, just like fire, then they'll never know what love is. Mm. Oh, I love you, honey. Oh, oh, he only beat me up because he loved me. <laughs> if I don't make him mad and he hits me, he won't love me. How many stories we have of that? And they love them to death, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Or you got the husband or the spouse or the wife, and they all lovey, 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 but then when the husband goes away, she gonna love somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> or he gonna love somebody else. Mm -hmm. They get caught. Oh, I thought you loved me. I do love you. This is nothing. This meant nothing to me. She's nobody. He's nobody. You're all I need. Mm -hmm. See all this, all these versions of love. Yeah. And then there's, I'm gonna love you from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite. That's really my favorite right there. <laughs> I'm gonna love you from a distance. Okay, I can I can respect that. I'm good with that. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, as long as there's no judgment and separation from that loving of distance. Because it's okay for us not to play well together and go find our families, but we met for what? A reason. For me to learn how to be whole and balanced coming into this energy that is not like unto my own. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So this is actually one of the ways or the keys that you transform and assume the responsibility. Same as what we're talking. Really, everything in our our topic is really this is the lesson. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it really is because at the end of the day, when we talk about God is love, it's taking responsibility of doing the search, your own soul search, of what your Creator to you is in terms of love. If He woke you up and you're blessed to have a roof, good health, food, clothing good spouse, children are healthy, blah, 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 blah. Wow. That's a good way to start the day. That's love. Because somebody woke up in a ditch. Somebody woke up or didn't wake up. Someone mm -hmm. woke up to, oh, he's not home yet. Mm -hmm. Wow. I wish my children were here. Mm -hmm. And then they don't take responsibility for those emotions. And now those emotions get the better of them. And then all of a sudden now there's no healing because all of this has to do with healing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. So when we talk about our lesson, just on the, I'm going to just go through the four real quick. That way we don't have to go into it. But when we look Which at page? The, uh, 280, <laughs> the key to transformation, assume complete responsibility. It's kind of self-explanatory. It really is. And really the key to your, your transformation is really your lived experience. 
every experience or trial and tribulation that you went through was your transformation of getting better and knowing how to handle it. Think about this. How many of y'all have been in trouble? Yes. Right. Did you get out of the trouble? Yes. Yes, of course. Did you, did you learn from that trouble? Yes. yes. So now, if that trouble were to try to resurface, would you be able to handle it differently? Yes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So your lived experience is your is the really your key to transformation. You remember this. Your life is not a destination. Your life is one of an experience. Mm. And that experience is good, holy, and beautiful. Because that is the essence of you are. Okay? So that's really your transformation. So this is why we instill love so much because that is the ultimate key because love never fails. Love is your secret weapon to everything. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So on the second paragraph, it is a mirror of what God is, infinite and perfect freedom. God simply never deviates from desiring only the extension of love. The birthing of that which is like unto himself, you. You get that? Mm. So it's in bold because we want you to mirror this also. In other words, if God never deviates from desiring the extension of love, we don't want you to never deviate from desiring only the extension of love mm-hmm. and birthing that which is unlike to yourself. In other words, birds of the feather do what? Flock together. Yes. So if, do you want to be around people who are always confrontational, no. angry, bitter, You're always defending your position? No. No. You want somebody you can have a loving relationship in peace, right? Mm -hmm. So you desiring love, which is the only extension of love, which is unto like yourself. Does Mm -hmm. that make sense? Yes. So your will is joined with your creator when you decide to birth only that which reflects love, the good, the holy, and the beautiful. The mind, as you have come to know it, will deceive you into thinking that, well, if I live the, that way 95% of the time, then what the heck? 5% of the time, I can do something else. That is absolutely true. Yet, the more you come to truly desire only that which reflects the truth of who you are, you will be able to tolerate less and less variance within yourself. This is why when, when any mind truly begins to awaken, it becomes more and more painful to continue certain thoughts or behaviors that does not reflect the deep desire of the heart. In other words, when those thoughts that are not satisfying to you no longer serve you, you change the thought. Mm. Does that make sense? Because now it it does not reflect the desires of your heart. They're, matter of fact, opposite. Mm -hmm. They no longer serve you. In other words, fear no longer serves any of you. So... It's not a desire of the heart, even though people say, oh, pastor, I need fear. No, you don't. (laughs) Fear is an illusion. Fear is not real. Fear affects the body where it causes too many illnesses, sicknesses, too many problems come out of fear. Mm -hmm. That's why I stated God did not give you fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So that is the reflection of the desire of your heart, okay? This is why the gap becomes less and less the gap in consciousness. The gap in which the mind tries to defend its choices and perceptions until finally it rests completely vulnerable. It lives in complete innocence and no longer, and please listen carefully, it no longer fears change within its system of thought. It no longer fears being challenged by another mind because it thirsts only for a creation of a thought system that can birth forth the good, the holy, and the beautiful. It no longer explains. It no longer defends. It no longer seeks to... You see what love is? 
Let your yes be yes and your no be no. You know how many times people say, oh, well, well Pastor, they, they asked me, they asked to borrow some money from me, and they've been asking continuously to the point where I said no, but then all of a sudden they feel guilty about saying no. And then here's what they do. They explain the no and feel worse. <laughs> you, you. Yeah. Because <laughs> now they've now they've justified the no to somebody that he don't care. Yeah. He don't care. Yeah. He just want what they want out of you. So let your yes be yes and your no be no. In other words, you don't have to explain anything. You don't have to defend anything. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they've they either already have judged you or condemned you. One or the other. Yeah. Here in the United States, especially in Christianity, and I don't and this is not for all of them, but it's a lot of hypocrisy. Here's why. When Christians who don't know each other here in the United States meet meet each other, normally here's how the conversation goes. Oh, what church you belong to? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Or what's your denomination? Mm -hmm. As soon as they say that, it's already comes with a prejudgment behind it. Mm -hmm. They already determine how they're going to treat you. If you don't belong to what I belong, now I got to recruit you. Come mm -hmm. over here because yours ain't right. <laughs> yeah. And they wonder why is so many different religions in the world. And watch this. All of them are only talking about four things. Every religion in the whole world speaks on four things. Man, woman, tree, serpent. Every culture has that story. Man, woman, beginning, tree of knowledge, and a serpent. Every culture has that story. Yes. <clears throat> All of them have all these names telling the same story. The serpent is the healing or the forgiveness or the evil? The suffering? Which part? Oh, the, the serpent. The serpent is healing. Yeah. Think about what our, think about when you go to the doctor. What is the what is the the, the symbol mm -hmm. for medicine? A uh, snake. Yeah. How can it be evil and you run to it when you get sick? Well, because nowadays the doctors are not very good. <laughs> well, yeah, they're not ethical. Well, but it's the snake is still healing. The serpent is still healing. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's not something evil. None of that. That's that is a myth to scare people in church and keep fear. And then at the end of the day, it's about control. Mm. If I control you with a scary story and put a book, chapter, and verse called a Bible on it or a scripture on it or something holy text to control you and you believe it because I say I'm the pastor, the priest, the reverend, the rabbi, or whatever. Evidently, I've connected myself to God. So now you want to know what God's going to say. So then people trust that and not going, okay, well, let me go check for myself. <laughs> Make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. The serpent is for healing. Okay? Mm -hmm. okay? No longer seeks to convince. It merely abides and gives itself over to the stream of love that would flow through it. Every idea presented by another mind becomes something to live with, something to digest. To see if there is a jewel within that can add to the beautiful of its own expression of the good, the holy, and the beautiful. Everything becomes grist for the meal. There, there is no longer a need to be in the defense. The body does not tighten. Notice every time you were in confrontation with somebody who was unreasonable and you begin, you're trying to prove your point, they're trying to prove your point, what does your body get? Tense. Okay. Yeah, tense. Okay. Not a good feeling, is it? No. So if you're tense and there's tense, there's no love because there's a lot of what? Tension. Mm -hmm. so now you have the energy of tension so when another another person walks into this conversation they immediately feel what tension okay. 
just that fast. Make sense? Yes. The breath does not grow short. There is only vulnerability. There is no longer a need to hide. There is no longer a need to be concerned with the perception of others since perception cannot harm you. There is only such love of self that nothing less than God will do. So again, in this lesson, we speak on the theme of desire. We seek to bring to you the point of realization that desire is the great power of creativity. These are the five steps. Realize that when you're asking, step two is God's job. Step three, you believe. Step three is your receive, correct? Where is the desire in this step? When you're asking. Yes. I love you. <laughs> your desire is when you're asking. Absolutely. Because Sudi paid attention because you believe what you ask for. That's your desire. So as long as you get out of the way, you manifest your desire. So that desire is the great power of creativity. Mm. So now you be conscious of what you desire. What does desire feel like? What does it look like? What's the emotion behind it? What's the power behind it? The desire of, wow, we need a new car. Hey, we need a new car. We need a new house. I need a new watch. I need new money. I need a new whatever. Get into that desire because the desire is what? Emotion. Emotion is what's going to drive that creativity. If you really break down the word desire, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It is that which births your very experience. Desire is perfectly free. That desire, that power to desire is within you and you will never be without it. It is impossible to be desireless since you can only find yourself to be where you have decided to be. Even if you're in a deep and perfect silent meditation, you're there because of what? Desire. Therefore, now new ascended masters and friends, please decide this day to take responsibility of what you desire. Recognize that you desire will be, that what you desire will be what you experience. What you desire will be what you experience. That is law of attraction. Mm -hmm. You're going to attract that emotion. So if I'm happy, I'm going to have, I'm going to attract happy people. If I'm sad, I'm going to attract every sad person around me. Mm -hmm. and we're all going to tell a sad story. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I think y'all kind of get the gist of it, correct? Yes, no, maybe so. Huh? What? I know. I think you kind of get the idea of this, the whole lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do I need to keep going or you got an idea? Come back. Huh? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, Lily, uh, yeah. there, there, there seems to be uh, no connection uh, there. Yeah. We're just uh, we're back. We're back. You, yeah, yeah, uh, are we okay with the lesson or we have to keep going? You want me to keep going or you got the idea of it? We we got the idea. I got the idea about um, be careful. It's kind of like be careful what you wish for, whatever you desire is going to happen. Yep. So better make it a good one because if you if you are in a bad mood, you attract the bad things. If you are in a good mood, you attract the, the, the good, happy people. Correct. So, yeah. Be de be, when we say be deliberate creators, you also have to be deliberate in your desires of what you're creating. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we want you to be really conscious of what you're thinking. Yes. So that's pretty much the, the really the gist of it. And take responsibility. So when you teach others and people begin to do the blame game, find a way to say, no, this is your fault. Their biggest challenge is going to be with relationships. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the relationship wants to be what? Right. Nobody wants to be really at peace. Everybody has to prove a point. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Oh, tomorrow we will not have a class tomorrow. I'll be doing the uh, the funeral service tomorrow. Uh, yeah, Monday. Okay. So we won't have it. So I'll be um, 
the family is from Indonesia, so afterwards we're going to go have dinner because uh, I don't think they're going to be back anytime soon. So. The family is from Indonesia. Yeah, my uncle Eddie, he has he owns an island in Indonesia. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so. What a small world, right? <laughs> yeah. That's right. Well, that's our that's our vacation spot, and then we go to um, the Bali. And then we go a couple of different places in Hong Kong, China. Nice. So they're originally from Indonesia and they, and they went to Hong Kong. Oh, they're really from China and moved to Indonesia. Yeah. Yeah. And then from Indonesia, then they go back to Hong Kong. And buy a lot of property. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So tomorrow we will not have a have a class. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna spend the uh, the memorial dinner mm -hmm. and uh, kind of a kind of a farewell because they they're up in age, so they're not. Yeah. They're, we don't want them to travel like that anymore. We'll go see them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions, comments, concerns? No. No. All no, is good, Pastor. All right. We love you. Thank you for all the prayers. Melissa, hopefully see you later on. I'll, I'll get the address and send it to you. Yeah, as a pastor, it takes me like an hour to get there. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's only okay, for 30 perfect. minutes. So I'm like, don't if, if, if you don't have to, just send love. Don't waste your gas. We understand. It's all good. <laughs> that's a, that's a out, think about it. That's an hour and drive in traffic for 30 minutes to... I think I think it's more of a human thing, you know, that you have.